the wall was here. It's an interior wall that actually backs up to the living room of my neighbor's home. So the way that this orchid was positioned during the winter months is that this was the area which was facing towards the inner space of the grow room. I purposely specified it was an interior wall because I thought it was going to be okay during the winter with the cold temperatures that it is not an external wall so there would be a buffer when it comes to radiating cold from that wall. Clearly I was very very wrong. During the latter part of winter I could see the leaves on this side of the orchid already starting to get cold damage. As you can see here from several years ago when I took the orchid outside and there was still a chill in the air. So this year I didn't bring her out that soon. Instead, knowing that she's a big orchid, I risked to see how far would this bacterial rot progress and if it would actually stop. And it hasn't. The only reason I'm chill about this is the fact that I have plenty of orchid to work with and she's already starting on new growth. There's more on the other side. She was due for a repot in 2024 anyway, and then I was going to divide her to gift her away. Well, now I'm going to have plenty of space in the pot when we get rid of all of this infected area and see how far it has spread into the rhizome. And then we can reposition the orchid and, well, start her again. And I'm not going to be dividing her because now every structure counts. While she still looks large, I don't know if what we're going to do is going to be good enough or when it comes time to repot her, whether I'm going to have to carve out even more of her structures to make sure that I do get rid of all the rot. But what we're going to do now is just remove as much as we can see. Clearly, this one's already coming off so easily. There's another one already up here, getting into healthy area, which I don't like whatsoever. So we'll have to go and cut right here and then see where we're at. Welcome to the patio. Welcome to the repercussions of not having heating in your growth space when you have a warm to hot growing orchid. And welcome to the assumption that what you think may not be radiating any cold air, temperature, etc. In actual fact, your orchid will tell you very clearly, this is far too cold for me. And welcome to limited space where intervention is not an option. Now, because I've already sterilized my secateurs, I am not going to start cutting from the back to front. I wanna see if I can get into good healthy tissue right out of the gate, because every subsequent cut that I make, if I see more decaying tissue, I will have to re-sterilize my secateurs. And for the purposes of time, oh well, and the magic of editing, I thought we were gonna start with the area that I would like to save. And thankfully, she's got a creeping rhizome. So what I'm going to do is go in here. I do want to kind of save this lead as well. Let's, let's cut her in this area first. And then get rid of this area. And as we fiddle with dragon's blood, we're just going to use some more alcohol and then play around with some dragon's blood on those cuts. Let me see if I've got you in an angle where you can see what I'm trying to do because maybe you will find yourself and well hopefully not but if you do ever find yourself in a similar situation then this hopefully will be of help because this doesn't just happen due to cold damage. This can also happen when you are in a climate with extremely high humidity and you have an orchid that is being rained upon persistently and there is just no reprieve for anything drying out because of the high humidity. This kind of bacterial infection can kick in as well. So even though high humidity is much, much more favored as far as I'm concerned when it comes to these warm to hot growers, there are downsides as well. So hopefully this video, it'll be helpful to somebody. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. Let me see where I need to cut again. But first of all, let's go and check this side out right here. There's another lead deteriorating, see, even that. Now that is not cold. This is already way too far away from the wall where this orchid was located. This is already bacterial infection taking a growth out. So we need to address 
this lead as well and while we marvel at new growth which is way premature so this orchid is sending out stress signals left right and almost center by already sending out new growth my secateurs have dried let's do another cut in here and straight away apply alcohol again so that it can evaporate and dry again and round and round she goes you know rinse repeat oh that's already good good tissue right there i went in a tad too far i didn't want to get rid of this one. Oh well we have fresh tissue and that is also very important in order to stop any kind of infection from spreading quel dommage hakuna matata it's only one considering how many we've lost let's avoid losing any more I would like to get rid of all of these, get them out of the pot. But first of all, let's see what we are up against here with this lead right here. Have you dried yet? No, my secateurs haven't dried yet. So do, 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 just kidding. In the meantime, I shall do some weeding and would you please give this video a thumbs up? Much needed. Encourage my orchid to bounce back from this. I mean, it's not like she's gonna die. Like I said, there's so much of her, but a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. And if you would like to subscribe to the channel, oh my goodness, consider yourself welcome. I would appreciate that as well. So now I'm just going to, I don't wanna pull her out of the pot because the roots that are attached, some of them are still viable, not that it matters anymore, but I don't wanna pull up against and break any other viable roots that have spread in the pot we can deal with all of that during our repot session usually this orchid throws out roots in august <laughs> the hottest and driest month of my climate here in southern spain i'm not entirely sure we're going to have to wait that long because obviously new growth are already starting and the roots may just start to grow much, much sooner, which means we can address this orchid much, much sooner, which would be much, much appreciated. <laughs> oh yes, I'm getting a very distinct pungent smell of decay. Yep, it's a little bit stinky. Oh yes, bacterial rot, smelly, smelly. I've got a creeping rhizome all the way through here all along here i would like to get it out I'm just wondering how much do i want to risk fiddling with this i wonder I can address all these roots on the repot. Oh, what a fun cleanup this is going to be. I can't wait. And that was a figure of speech because of course I can wait. I have to wait for the new roots to come. I've just sprayed a little bit of hydrogen peroxide to take care of any of the bacteria on the surface. It's not ideal, but it is better than nothing. And then we can still fuss around with some loose rogue steely that makes everything look unsightly, but that's just aesthetics. Now, for now, I have treated the rhizomes with dragon's blood. And I just want to explain why in this case I use dragon's blood instead of cinnamon. Well, you can see I have roots very close to all the cuts that I made and I don't want cinnamon blowing over there and desiccating what roots I have left. Dragon's blood does the trick just as well, quite nicely. However, if the infection is further along in the rhizome than I could see, we are going to probably have more losses, more structures decaying. Now, for the fun of it, you want to dissect a pseudobulb with me? <laughs> Might as well. Por que no? While we're at it, while we have the option, let's have some fun. 
Look at the spoils. And before we proceed, I've got orchids underneath this shelf. If anything oozes out, I don't want it dripping on those. I'm going to sort that out very, very quickly and get rid of them. Let's start with the one that's not as offensive. The other ones, oof, they are pungent. I can smell them from here. And I'm six foot tall. <laughs> I hope you saw that oozing. That's what we don't like at all. I am so grateful I have a lot of this orchid. See the oozing? No bueno. Don't like oozing. Ugh. Ooh. You don't want scratch and sniff under these circumstances, trust. Ugh. Wow, I'm not gonna go and open anymore. Ooh, <laughs> I think we've had enough fun. That is stinky. I'm going to sterilize everything, everything. It's like ugh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Anyway, I wanna thank you for joining me on the patio. We still have 50% left of my beautiful Epidendrum Coilostylus variety or steady eye. And I shall be keeping a steady eye. <laughs> Ah, see what I did there on her to make sure that these growths stand a chance as well as the new roots. So she's not gone from the patio. Think we may just have gotten away with it. Fingers crossed, that's for sure. Thank you so much for joining me here. Now that the temperatures are warming up at night as well and there's more space in the grow space, she is not up against the wall and hopefully <laughs> we're gonna have her around for many, many years to come. I appreciate your time on the patio with me. It was wonderful to have you here. Thank you for watching the video to the end. Remember, this would be amazing. You are amazing. Have yourself a beautiful day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.